Hello everyone, this is Jason Mutrik from StellarMate. In this video, we'll be talking about ECOS Guide Modulo. So before we get started, the guiding is a pretty intricate and complex operation to get it correctly done and to continue doing it correctly in future sessions. So here are a few tips that you need to follow in order to get correct guiding. Make sure that you really have good polar alignment. You can use the ECOS alignment modulo here in the polar alignment and you can measure and correct your polar alignment errors. Without a good polar alignment uh, for your mount, you're not going to achieve any good guiding results. In this video, we'll be talking exclusively about using the ECOS internal guider. In uh, future videos, uh, I'll be talking about using it with external guiders such as PHT2. So here in the control section, you can capture an image or you can loop and see how good your images are. And let me just try and capture a one second image here. Okay, I don't see many good stars and it's awfully bright. I might be having clouds outside. Uh, and as we expected, if you click loop, then it will loop each second and you can here see the whatever that's detected by the uh, load star okay here so we select which camera you want to capture from which guider so in my case it's the load star and here via indicates the corrections should be sent to which device so as you know the guide module will capture an image, we lock to a star, and then it calculates the deviation of the star from its locked position. Then it sends these correction, corrective pulses to either the, to the mount, but it can send it either through, for example, the ST4 cable attached to your load star, or it can send it to the ST4 for cable attached to the QSI CCD, and there is no reason to do that, doesn't make sense there, but that's possible with ECOS. Or you can send it directly to the mount, if it's supported. Some mounts do not support pulse guiding commands, but EQMod does. In my case, I'll be sending it to EQMod directly, because I don't have an SC4 cable attached, I got rid of my SC4 cable. Here we set the exposure. Exposure time, one to two seconds is, is reasonable. Let me put 1.5 seconds here. The pinning, it's pinning two by two, I think should be the minimum you should take so that you have better stars to work with. The box, this is the, simply the box size. And uh, here we have it at 32 pixels. So that sounds like a good enough size to enclose the star. Here are some of the guide infos that we're using the primary telescope. It's because I have an OEG. Actually, it's an off axis, but it's, it's using the same focal length as the primary telescope. If you have a separate guide scope, then select guide scope here and make sure to have the correct information here for your focal length and uh, for your aperture and focal length. Here you see that calculated value. So for me, the focal length, the aperture, and etc. Here we see the drift graphics, which we haven't started yet because we haven't started guiding. And here we have the control parameters on one side. It's usually something you don't need to change, and I would recommend you go back to documentation to read on the exact details of, like, for example, the proportional guide and the maximum and minimum pulses. This is the drift plot. By by default, it says two, ar two arc seconds. So the green circle here has a radius of two arc seconds. So if the locked position deviates more than two arc seconds away, it will be it will fall into the the yellow or the uh, warning area. If it goes beyond that, it will fall into the alert or danger zone. So you can play with that and increase or decrease your acceptable area accordingly. This is only for display purposes. It has no effect on the guiding performance itself. 
This is just to tell yourself, like within the ballpark, is this in the green zone or is it in the danger zone? This is you make a decision yourself by default. It's set to two arc seconds, which for most telescopes and the amateur uh, astrophotography world, this is a, def a decent default value. Okay. So if you go to options and we have we have a couple of options we have the calibration options and the guide options for the calibration options here you set the pulse length so by by default it's 1000 milliseconds or 1 second here you set how many iterations I think by default it's 5 and I set it to 3 I only need 3 iterations for the calibration uh, and of course it calibrates on two axes and it automatically selects a star for us uh, if you want to select a star manually, then uncheck this option. For the guide options, you select which algorithm you want to use. Uh, I think the default one is Smart Algorithm, but I'm experimenting now with SIP. Uh, and here we have the, the dither options if you want to do captures, and we're not going to get into this now. Okay, so now uh, I'm not really confident about the stars right now. They don't really look good. And actually, let me put it at 64. No, actually, let me go back to 32. But let's let's see. So now we don't have any calibration going on because we just started. So now let's just click Guide, and it will start the calibration process. It will begin by picking a candidate uh, star and it selected the star but it's what's very close to the edge but I guess this could work so now you see it's doing the right ascension drifting and now declination drifting let me just get, get zoom in and here you see the SIP algorithm sometimes have problems deciding where the star is especially in this like awfully noisy image. Okay, so now the auto guiding actually starts. It's, uh, it's pretty simple <laughs> if you have everything set up correctly. And here you can see the deviations. It's pretty close to the center, uh, but with time it can get, uh, it can get worse or get better. Here on the drift graphics, if you actually hover over the points, you can see all the information. You can see the exact deviation at each point of time. And of course, you can zoom in, drag forward and back. Similarly here, you can zoom in and see all the uh, deviations. The plus sign here with a circle, this is the last deviation. So you can, only, you can always tell where the last deviation is. And so, so far here we see within, we are within one arc second, and we can see here the, the RMS value. So the total RMS is 0 0.56, the uh, RA and the declination RMS are reasonably okay. Uh, you can uh, comfortably take like a 10 second, a 10 minute exposure with this uh, guiding performance. Of course, you need to have, um, as I said, really good polar alignment, and it helps you have a really good mount. I have a, an EQ8 mount, uh, so that's a, that was a really nice upgrade from my previous uh, Cirrus mount. So right, so so this is the basic uh, guiding workflow. Uh, if you know, go if you know, actually go back to the capture module, for example. Here you see the guiding deviation. It's less than two arc seconds. And so now you can add your sequences. Let's add 10, 10, 10, 4 by 4 here. If, if we now start the sequence, the sequence will watch the guide deviations. As long as they are within two arc seconds, the capture will go on but as soon as they go above two arc seconds the capture will abort the sequence will abort but it will wait until it goes below that 
also if you have if you have like passing clouds uh it will of course lead to failure but don't worry because in in, in case is 2.9.5 it actually will wait for a bit and then it will retry to capture, acquire the target uh, star again, and it will try to continue the auto guiding process. So it will not, it will not simply die and abort everything. It will retry again if there are any uh, stars left. If it's really cloudy and there is no chance of any stars, after a while it will just you know just give up. Okay, so it seems that the guiding process is moving smoothly. For the control parameters, you can find more about this in the documentation. And I think that's uh, pretty much it. This is the short introduction to guiding with the internal guider on ECOS, uh, Clear Skies, and Happy Hunting with Stellar.